Hello and welcome to the Clay Boy Show. This is the number one free time on scripted show. I am Latte and today we are looking at politics. We are going to West Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Nigeria is one of the biggest, not one of the biggest, I think the most populous country in Africa. And this is a campaign season because the election is coming up on February 24th, 25th, I'm sorry, as scheduled by Heineck. Now we have four leading candidates in no special order. Um, Ahaji Atiku Abubakar, former Vice President, uh, Hamid Bola Tinebu, uh, former Governor of Lagos State, uh, Senator Rabbi Konkwaso, former Governor of Kano State, and Mr. Peter Gregory will be former Governor of Anambra State. These are four leading candidates. And three out of these four have been to Chatham House to deliver uh, uh, lectures and take questions on what they want to do. So what I did, I just randomly pick couple of questions and how to respond there to the questions and put it out there for you so what you do watch this video and go back and watch full videos of their performance and that can help you to decide who you will vote for if the channel house lectures and interview actually uh, has an impact on our election you decide that but watch this video and that will help you and guide you Subscribe to this channel if you're new. Promise to keep you entertained and informed all the time. And hit the notification bell uh, so you get as soon as we drop and drop our content. And also leave your comment and like and share what we do here. Thank you so much. And stay safe. Watch the video and then decide who will be the next leader. Even if you're not from Nigeria, just look at it and Put your comment there. Hey, I'm not from Nigeria, but I think this is a better candidate. Thank you and stay safe out there. Answer the questions, Mr. Tunumbu. Please, if we can keep quiet and one conversation here. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, uh, let me one uh, once a demonstrate here. One of those philosophers. I want the doctrine that I believe firmly in is teamship, unbreakable team. <laughs> to demonstrate that, I will choose the first question assigned to Dele Alake. Okay. And the second question assigned to Nasiru Erufai. <laughs> and third question assigned to to Ben Ayadi. All right. So, uh, can we have microphone coming in the front? And the first question is about blood oil. Uh, conf yeah, oil. There, this gentleman. Yeah, yeah, Elvifi, I can see him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please go Security ahead. Security Nasiru Elvifi. Yes, thank you very much for that. So, with, with the green uh, jumper. Yeah. Yeah, uh, my name is Duke Uputa. Uh, I am an independent political analyst and also a Chatham House member. Uh, Senator, um, given that your campaign strategy and promises are very similar to that of Labour Party in many ways. And your main objective is to stop the extraction by the two major establishment parties. Is there any circumstances in which you will uh, step aside and cooperate with Labour in order to remove uh, the current uh, extraction in Nigeria? <laughs> Thank you very much. Senator, you may want to go to the podium and stand up and respond to those questions. Thank you. Uh, the final question you received, we did get several of those virtually also. So just a number of people thinking the same thing. Issue of um, labor. You see, that's the problem we have. The gentleman who stood up there, I'm sure he comes from a particular group or a, a, a region without even asking him, without him, just because you saw if you have a party 
which is based on ethnicity and religion. That's the difference between Labour Party and, of course, our party, which is a national party, New Nigeria People's Party. <laughs> now, we want... Please, you see, while we are accusing leaders of being one thing or the other negative, I think the followers also must learn how to be Nigerians, not uh, coming from one part of the country. Let me say that I was one of those initially wanting to work together with the Labour Party. But unfortunately, at that time, the Labour Party was under very serious uh, media hype. And therefore, they could not see reason. And you still not see reason that uh, I will withdraw. I wish you didn't go to that, that extent. You would have said that to work with Labour or to work with APC or PDP, that would have been more responsible. But you cannot come to London. Maybe people who are here don't even know what is happening. And uh, I want to say that our party, NNPP, is the only growing party in Nigeria today. We have seen the maximum uh, 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 any party, especially the party you mentioned, Labour, to us is like Andrew's Labour Salt. Just came, <laughs> prr, now it's coming down. That's the reality. Just take note of it. And of course, NNPP, uh, our party, is the only party that is now getting support. Forget about big, big people who are the actual problem of this of our country. But supporters at ground, <laughs> grassroots level, we are the only party today. And mark you, we have succeeded in locking northern Nigeria today in terms of uh, 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 votes, in terms of uh, 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 support. Now we are working in the southern part of the country. And uh, for us, the difference between north and south is that north know us more than the southern part of the country. If you are from the north, I'm sure you wouldn't have made that statement for Concoso to withdraw for Labour Party. <laughs> you should go and look at my credentials, my brother. I am a PhD holder in civil engineering. And check your candidate, what he has. I have been in the system <laughs> for over 30 years now. I have been civil servant for 17 years. I wasn't a trader, civil servant for 17 years. <laughs> I was Deputy Speaker of the House of Reps in 1992. I was in the Consumer Conference elected delegate. I was Governor of Kano State for eight years. And so on and so I was in the, uh, the Senate, and so on and so forth. So when we sat down, what I told them is what I will tell you. Okay. If anybody wants to come so to withdraw, let's bring criteria and select the best. Anytime I have any better candidate, I'm ready to talk to him. All Thank right. you very much. Let's, let's um, please introduce yourself. One question. Thank you so much. Good afternoon and welcome, sir. My name is Priscilla Winkbo, um, and I'm an independent broadcaster here in London. And, sir, you spoke about your point number five, which is to generate electricity and power in Nigeria. And you spoke about transmission, distribution, and generation. But I think it's fair to say that our problems with power goes beyond those three areas. And the main problem that I see here is this. We have um, a population or part of the economy, shall we say, those who supply spare parts, the engineers, those who work within that sector, whether it's those that are selling um, um, generators. And we know that that issue is perhaps the biggest issue when it comes to our power generation. So my question here is this, how do you plan, number one, and I'm gonna take a risk here, to deal with the big boys, and how do you also plan to address that economy that will then no longer exist because you have generated power? Because I'm sure that they too will rise up um, against it. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. We did uh, online have lots of questions about refining also. And so this is a key issue that people are asking question about. So the gentleman there, a uh, bit further along. Yes, there, you, just there. 
Yeah. Please go ahead, introduce yourself. Thank you very much. Question. Good to see you, Peter. Um, Paul Arkwright, I was the British High Commissioner to Nigeria from 2015 to 2018. And it's good to see you in London, sir. Thank you very much for your talk. Um, I, I've now moved into private business. I'm a consultant and I'm advising companies uh, and funds, investors to uh, look at Africa, to look at Nigeria, to consider investing there. And everyone agrees, I think, that FDI, foreign direct investment, is critical to the future of Nigeria. But they, at the moment, they're very cautious, uh, and that's putting it diplomatically. <laughs> If, when uh, you become president, uh, sir, could you tell me the, the sort of three things you would do in the first, let's say, 100 days, um, which would encourage, which would send the right signal to foreign investors to look again at Nigeria, not just look again at Nigeria, but to invest in Nigeria? Because as you know, uh, I'm one of Nigeria's strongest supporters, and I think this is a country which is worth investing in. Thank you. Okay. And I will come back to this. Let me start with the with my sister there. He talks about the big what, what you're saying is about the big boys who are selling generators. Let me assure you, let me assure you what we've been campaigning on. Our campaign, you have heard them say we don't have structures. That is the structure we're trying to destroy. Structure of criminality. That is what I mentioned. Now Nigeria has been held captive. That structure is structure that impoverished Nigeria. We will dismantle it. It will not be there. I assure you of that. We're going to turn around the power sector. Nigeria generates about, today, 56,000 megawatts of electricity for 200 million people. And South Africa, the second biggest in terms of economy in the continent. Five to 6,000. Five to 6,000, that's five to 6,000, sorry. South Africa, the second biggest economy, 60 million people generates about 40 to 50,000. And South Africa in the past three months has declared emergency in power and said anybody can generate up to 100 megawatts without license. So somebody who is 60 million generating about over 40,000 declared emergency. What do you think somebody with 2 million people generating 5 to 6,000 would do? What? I'm going to declare war on power, and I'll solve it. Anybody who stands on the way, so be it. <laughs> Bringing back foreign investor is a simple point. Foreign investor is like bee and honey. What you need is to create honey. The way B will find the place is very simple. Foreign capital is scared of corruption. Is scared of board policies. Is scared of where there's no rule of law. You need to put a regulatory environment that makes it conducive. You need to secure it. That is at the heart of what that is an hour of faith. We will build that intangible assets of securing the country, making sure that we govern through rule of law. We will fight corruption. That they have a record that is the only National Assembly member who refused to buy property of government when it was offered to all National Assembly members. You can go and look at his record. If you have seen anywhere he has compromised or put himself in a transactional position. Now stop running. I know how I approach him and I told him, I am the you all to save our people. So we came together and we came back and said, 
We'll work as a team. We'll solve this problem. Go and check my record. I've governed the state for eight years. 